You've been following a rock crew. Uh, I probably, I would say since 2009 or 2010, likely 2009. And do you know if Mr. Marito has ever followed rock crew? I don't recall if she was working with us uh, during the rock crew investigation, uh, maybe at the end of it. Okay. And when you say the end of it, when, when you were following to? I would say um, the, the bulk of our rock crew investigation was probably 2011, 12, and, and maybe into 13. Okay. So she may have become familiar around 2013-ish. Yeah, and I, forgive me if the dates are off, but uh, it wouldn't have been in the early phases of that. And the tweets that we were looking at were some of them from 2011 and 2012. Yes, ma'am, they were. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Shaw also asked you a number of questions regarding um, getting into the gang. Do you recall him asking you about whether you can get beat into the gang or sex into the gang? Yes. Okay. Is there another way that you can gain access into a gang? There is. What is that? And it's the third one that we think we talked about in my, my earlier testimony. You can also um, commonly be blessed into a gang. Okay. Now, do you recall Mr. Shaw asking you, um, in his line of question, asking you about getting beaten, and you began talking about being aware of um, YSL members in the school potentially beating in um, individuals? Do you recall that line of question? I do. Okay. Now, what, if any, information do you have or do you have knowledge of as far as students in school, particularly YSL members, beating in um, individuals at the school? Do you have an objection, sir? Yes, sir. I have an objection. All right. Um, I'm over with an objection. Mr. Sharp? My objection is exactly the same, Your Honor. Let's see his personal Hold. You may answer. Um, I've reviewed police reports over um, a number of years where we had fights in schools um, related to YSL gang activity, and I didn't review specific reports before today as far as the um, as far as those those fights that occurred. During cross examination, Mr. Shard, you were also asked a question about whether someone can unilaterally join YSL. Do you remember that? I do. Um, and you said no, but you were not given the opportunity to explain. Based on your knowledge, training, experience, why don't you think that someone can unilaterally join the gang YSL? Well, and I think I've said this potentially before, but the gang determines who the gang's members are. And um, in my experience and through our investigation, um, the gang members themselves uh, make a distinction between those that they believe are members of the gang and those that are not. Um, but I've not ever seen an instance where someone declared themselves a member of the gang without um, without any other association with the group. Um, Mr. Shot, we're asked about a book of knowledge. Do you remember that? I do. I mean, your training, knowledge, and experience, do all traditional, non-traditional hybrid gangs have books of knowledge? I'll still move with sir. Okay. No, um, in fact, most gangs don't have books of knowledge. Um, even traditional gangs on the West Coast um, don't have books of knowledge um, on the West Coast. And uh, what we've seen, since West Coast gangs don't typically have books of knowledge, we've seen them um, become a thing here. They've been created... Um, here, as some of those West Coast traditional gangs have moved here, uh, this is to facilitate that the sharing of information that is shared person to person where these gangs originated. Um, and since this is a different location, the other side of the, the country, um, we've seen those books of knowledge uh, show up here. Books of knowledge are commonly associated with traditional gangs in the Midwest, um, often Chicago-based gangs. That's where we've most commonly seen those over the years. But as I mentioned this morning, the majority of gangs are not traditional gangs. Uh, the majority of gangs are somewhere on that continuum of what we term non-traditional or hybrid gangs. And most do not have a book of knowledge or some codified set of rules uh, and, and codes and things like that for their members. Um, do you also recall Mr. Sharp asking about a due structure? Do not all gangs have a due structure? I do. Um, do all gangs have a due structure? No, certainly all gangs don't have a due structure. Is there a requirement of a joining ceremony for a group to be considered a gang or an enterprise? There is not. Is there a requirement for a book of knowledge for a group to be a gang or an enterprise? There is not.
there's a requirement for there to be a due structure for a gang to be considered, uh, for a group to be considered a gang or an enterprise. No, ma'am, there's not. Now, if a group does not have a um, joint ceremony, a book announcement, or a due structure, how do you determine if that group is a gang? Again, we go back to the definition that we started with in the beginning, which is uh, this case is the law, the jurisdiction, or the I'll sustain you, Jason's question. Probably in your precinct. Okay. Is this what you've already testified to, how, how it's already determined? Yes, ma'am, it is. On cross, Mr. Sharp asked you about um, certain members of certain members and founders of YSL. Do you remember that line of questioning? I do. As a department, God bless you, as a department, how many members of YSL have you identified? Uh, I believe we've identified. And the answer is over. I believe we've identified over 100 members and associates of YSL. And are all, are all of those individuals listed on this indictment? No, they are not. And you were asked specifically about Fernando Crenshaw and what he claimed to be a founder of YSL. Do you remember that? I do. To your knowledge, has Mr. Williams, Mr. Jeffrey Williams, Mr. Walter Murphy, and Mr. Trontavis Stevens ever acknowledged Fernando Crenshaw as a founder of YSL? Not to my knowledge, no. Now I'm going to transition to um, some of the questions that Mr. Steele asked you over the last couple of days, okay? Yes, ma'am. So first, Mr. Steele asked you a number of questions about the tweets. We spend a lot of days on tweets, and that the tweets that were introduced were in and of itself a crime. Do you remember that, that line of questioning? I do. Over the years of monitoring the Young Thug Twitter account, have you ever disputed that he also used the uses that account to promote his music? I have not. For his concerts? I have not. And also reviewing his account, have you seen where he also promotes his gang or his gang affiliation? I have. Faces? That goes to intent. Oh, sir. I have. Are tweets in and of a crime? Um, not necessarily. When you say not necessarily, what do you mean? Um, some tweets could rise to the level of terroristic threats, um, something of that nature, but, but no, um, typically they would not end up themselves being a crime. Okay. And Mr. Steele also asks if being in a gang in and of itself or associated with a gang is a crime. Is it a crime to be in a gang? It is not a crime to be in a gang. Is every piece of evidence a crime? When you're evaluating a case, do you look at each piece of evidence separately, or do you look at it all collectively? I'm sustained for other reasons. But he is a... I'm sustained for other reasons. Right, let me ask you this. Hypothetically, is leaving the shirt at an armed robbery a crime in and of itself? No, it is not. Hypothetically, just writing words on a piece of paper, say, for example, I robbed John Doe with a gun, a crime in and of itself. No, it is not. Hypothetically, it's finding the DNA on the shirt that is left at the armed robbery, of, armed robbery scene a crime by itself. No, it's not. Hypothetically, can leaving the shirt at the armed robbery scene plus finding the DNA because finding the note provides evidence of whether the, whether a person committed that particular armed robbery. Yes, that certainly could. I'm going to show you what's already been um, admitted as state exhibit number one, slide number two. Now, this is the same trial that you spoke about back in November of um, last year. Mm, yes, ma'am, it is. Now, when you look at tweets as a piece of evidence, would that factor in any part of this game trial when you're trying to ascertain whether or not a crime was in progress of a game? Your Honor. If you have an objection, sir, you've got a state objection, and I, I'm going to ask you the basis. So. Yeah. Um, 
is going to kind of, it is not the on Kennedy jury, it's the law. I understand. I'm all over the objections. You can answer. So reviewing the tweet or other social media could potentially factor into several places on this triangle. One, as we discussed, it could actually be evidence of a crime itself, so it could actually be connecting the person to the crime if they make a confession to a crime, or if, in the example of terroristic threats, they were to actually commit the crime through the message. Additionally, as we're trying to determine if this person is employed by or associated with the gang, some social media could provide assistance with us identifying whether they are claiming or participating in a criminal street gang, again, which in and of itself wouldn't be the crime, but could be evidence of their association with the gang. Additionally, reviewing large amounts of social media over a number of associated persons over time also is answering part of our questions about the definition of a street gang and whether this group would meet the qualifications of a street gang based on those common identifying signs, symbols, tattoos, graffiti, attire, or other distinguishing characteristics. Thank you. Mr. Steele also asks you specifically if the words fervent of the gang is represented on that triangle. Do you recall that? I do. Are those words specifically on the triangle? No, they're not. At what point in the triangle do you determine if a crime is in furtherance of the gang, although those words aren't specifically on the triangle? Your Honor, that's the law. Could you make an objection, Mr. Steele, and then let me go ahead and acknowledge you? Okay. Thank you. It's the law. I have not the opportunity to make your thoughts on this. I'm going to overrule you, Jim. Let me answer the question. So during our investigation, we evaluate all of the evidence that we gather through this lens, and from there, our knowledge of what it means to participate in the gang and what its potential motivations are would be at what point we would decide whether we believe there's enough evidence that this is furtherance of the gang's activities, and we would then bring that evidence forward to a judge or to a grand jury to present the evidence that we have. Now, Mr. Steele introduced a number of different tweets and asked if they were in context to a particular tweet. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to ask you first, outside of any promotional tweets, did you see gang identifiers for either Rock Crew, The Bloods, or YSL in the tweets that Mr. Steele introduced during his cross-examination? I did. All right. I'm going to first show you Defense Exhibit 61. And if you can zoom in. On the January 15, 2012 tweet. Now, we're going to go to the tweets that the state first introduced, which is January 15. Excuse me. You didn't introduce this. Looking at January 15, 2012 tweet, the one on the bottom, which says, Niggas keep putting my name, no shit, I'm going to let them think it's cool, till they beat the fuck up straight, three arrows or three carrots, and they go for everybody. Within that tweet, do you see any, what you would call gang identifiers in that particular tweet? What I would note is what we discussed a bit is the avoidance of the use of the letter C replacing that with the letter K. Also, looking at the tweet above it, nigga ain't giving me shit, so I'm not coming nowhere, your shit going to get shoot up, shoot up, FR, FR, exclamation point. Do you see that same type of reference of a C being used with a K? I do. As far as context, were there any tweets introduced that said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to shoot your shit up for real, for real? No, I didn't see any tweets like that. Were there any tweets that put this tweet in context that says, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to beat anything up? Is there anything in there that gives any context to that? No, ma'am. So outside of the promotional tweets that are contained within this exhibit, 
is that still a tweet that appears to be threatening to shoot something up for real, for real? Objection, I'm here to hear the jury. And I'll sustain that one. And outside the promotional tweets, are gang identifiers still being used in those two tweets? What do you say? A standing question. I'm going to now show you exhibit 62. What was the last one? 61. This is 62? Yes. All right. Within exhibit 62, do you see any gang identifiers in the promotional tweets that are after the top tweet with the two guns and the pistol peak? I don't believe so. Okay. And with the two guns and pistol peak, is there any significance about the two guns next to the pistol peak? Yes. Two guns being the sex money murder hand sign, and that, of course, being a reference to pistol peak. All right. Now I'm going to show you defense exhibit 64. In defense exhibit 64, who is the author of the first June 9, 2012 tweet? The one at the top of the page is Walter Murphy. So that's not the Young Thug account tweeting? It is not. And Mr. Steele asked you about DK or Walter Murphy. Do you know Cartel DK to be Walter Murphy? I do. And to your knowledge, is that the same Walter Murphy who was said to be a founder of YSL? Yes, it is. And to your knowledge, does Mr. Murphy claim affiliation with the Bloods? Yes, he does. And within that tweet that is posted by Mr. Murphy, do you see any Blood gang identifiers? Excuse me. I do. And what is that? At the end of the tweet, it says Blatt. 